welcome to another episode of Bears Banter, brought to you by Stonemasons and Landscapers and North's Group. I hope you're enjoying the broadcasts. Today, we've got a very special guest, someone that the fans have asked for. Um, he's been playing at the Bears for seven and a half years in the New South Wales Cup, a local junior, coming through the Brothers and the Barara Club, um, a fantastic clubman, still with the Bears in a coaching capacity, possibly a playing capacity, uh, but we'd love to welcome him here today, Curtis Johnston. How Thanks, are you, mate. mate? Good, mate. Pleasure to be here. Uh, look, there is an injury issue I, I see. We'll just get that out of the way. Yeah. What have you done to your knee? Um, well, I work as a gardener, um, so I was up a ladder. Um, dodgy ladder, must have been anyway. I didn't set it up wrong, so... <laughs> But um, up the ladder, and the top of it's shattered into about 20 pieces, aluminium ladder, top was plastic, um, and it's just, yeah, the plastic bits all shattered, the hinges are gone, I've fallen about three metres and torn my medial ligaments, mm. um, so, you know, it's supposed to be the year I've stopped playing footy, and I've got my injury from doing work outside of footy. So. I know that fire still burns in there, and we've had some talks over the, you know, last 18 months or so about your career and your transition yeah. out of footy. I know that fire still burns though. I mean, next year's another year for a lot of people. What does next year in terms of footy mean for Curtis Johnson? Is he, is well, he still going to put his hand up? I don't know. Don't know? Give JT a call. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I was signed to play at Asquith. Yep. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys there I played with last year in and out of Canterbury Cup. Um, so yeah, the fire's always going to be there. I don't think that'll ever die for footy. You know, it's, it's sort of embedded in me to play and North Sydney and whatnot, but um, you know, I just, it was sort of hard over the last year in and out of the team. And sort mm. of, it, it plays with life as well, in and around, because you're going here, there and everywhere. And I like to be in the same team and playing each week, so it makes it hard. And I'd like to have kept going with North, but you, know, you don't know what's over the horizon. And I don't know what JT's got in store and the capacity of what Bears are going to have after all this COVID stuff. And, yep. You know, they might need me if I'm... Well, Asquith doesn't have a team for the next couple of years as well. They've yep. pulled out of Ron Massey Cup, so... Mm. Mm. Um, so the doors are open. The, the options are open. Are open. You know, okay. I'm still fit and always ready to go, but we'll see what happens. I knew that would be the answer I, yeah. I'd get. <laughs> yeah. um, you're a local junior um, in the North Sydney Club. You know, one of those rare finds, and you came through the system. You played at Brothers. You moved up to Barara. Mm. You played for the Barara Club. What was What is your recollections of a young Curtis Johnson and scoring try after try and, yeah. and just blitzing the opposition um, uh, and yeah. travelling around to all those local grounds? Yeah, local grounds. I remember first playing at Tunks Park. I remember it stunk pretty bad for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't... I remember going down there and it was always muddy at Tunks Park. They've fixed it since, but um, I remember those days and just... Uh, I remember my coach used to get annoyed at me because I'd always scoot out a dummy half and score a try from dummy half and if you got a pass to get a five point try, you got a pass twice. So. Yes, um, yes. I remember those days. Yes. Um, we moved from Chatswood to Brower and I started playing for Brower Wallabies. And um, Brower Club was really good. They were a strong club. Them and Pennant Hills were the strongest clubs yep. in those days. Yep. Um, so I went up to Brower and had a lot of good years up there and made a lot of mates up there. And, you know, we were, it's a small little town up there and everyone knows each other. And, um, yeah, we had a lot of good times and uh, we were all just mates, you know, we saw each other all day and mm. everyone went to school together and then mm. on the weekend we are playing footy together, you know, when it was yeah. rained out we were yeah. devastated because we just yeah. wanted to get out and play teams. Oh, it's so, junior footy all over, isn't yeah, it? That's, so. that's, you, you live for it and I know you live yeah, for it yeah. more than most people, believe me. I call you a blue chip bear just because of your dedication to the club and your commitment, your tattoo, your family, you know, everyone's so much into the Bears and you're a young Bears fan from the start because yeah. I remember you turning up to the games yeah. and being at, at all sorts of presentations. Yeah. Where did that come from? What, what, what's the genesis of well, you know, that passion? I had the jersey that you debuted in before I was born. So it was the Norse Leagues across the front. It was the, the boxy one we're playing in now, the red jersey with the boxes. Um, Dad had that jersey bought for me in probably 88, yeah. you know, early 89. And um, there wasn't really a choice. You know, I wasn't going to be any, anywhere else. Um, no, and then I was lucky obviously. enough, as well as being a fan of the club and my dad being so passionate and on the hill with the flag every game, you know, it was depressing when the Bears got kicked out of the comp, obviously. Lucky you weren't here to see that year over in England, but... Um, the passion and fire come from my old man, and my mum's pretty fiery as well, so mm. a lot of that enthusiasm yep. and um, just 
the will to win. Yep. You know, I was a fan, so I was carrying the torch for the the old bears that played as well as the fans as well. So. And I think what what you did to for the club is you kept that real red and black feel yeah. for those players that came in and out of the team because there's lots of players in and out of that New South yeah. Wales Cup team over the over the years but one thing was a solid one thing that was consistent that Curtis Johnson was going to be there and reminding them of what North Sydney was about and what it meant to be playing in that jersey you know that's what I saw and that's well, what I'm... I knew I knew that a lot of guys come back from NRL and it was the same when I'd have to go back to Asquith every now and then you don't play your best game there because you never want to be up a grade. You want to be playing NRL or Canterbury Cup or New South Wales Cup as it was back then um, when I had my best years. But I'd remind the boys, like, you know, whether it's Lottie DeKiri or George Burgess or any of these high flight players coming back, it was crazy playing with Lottie. Like, Lottie mm. played the Bears in the NRL in 99. Yes. The second game. So yep. to him being back playing, you know, I had to keep reminding him, like, you know, mm. that was 2014. I go, you could be playing in a grand final team this year if you keep putting in and he ended up it happened. the grand final. So yes. Yep. We had um, we had a lot of good players back and I'd like to make sure that, you know, this is a traditional club, but yep. a big part of rugby league. And yep. You guys need to come back and respect And you that. know what? It was It's easy to come back with a, you know, kick the dirt attitude and, and not be quite sure where you stand in the whole in the whole framework. But you're reminded with you around that, hey, there's a game of footy ahead. Yep. Get out there. We want your best best effort. And I know that a lot of people respected what you brought to the team, a lot yep. of those big, guys, big names, players that you mentioned. Um, mate, we go back a long way. Um, you started in Harold Matz in 2003 um, at a carnival and from that point on, you came through the system, through the pathway at the Bears, playing all, taking all the steps to be a mainstay in, in New South Wales Cup. You played with players like Liam Foran and Mitchell Pearce. What are your recollections, and Kieran Foran, what are your recollections of the junior rep footy with the Bears? Some of the coaches, some of the, you know, those, those games. Um, well, I've got to remember, I've got to go back to probably when I was doing my last few seasons with North Sydney Brothers and Barry Henley, you probably remember Barry... Um, he was a director at Brothers for a long time. He was saying to my old man that he thought that I was good enough to play development squad for the Bears. And to me, that was such a big thing. And that was like under 12s, you know, or something. Yep. Development squad for the Bears. And I thought that was great. And, and I did end up playing and ended up going pretty good as well. And then you, you've seen us play. And, um, yeah, I got to, got to play with the junior grades, um, uh, 16s, Harold Matz, SG Ball. We had really good sides, but we just always felt short and I just mm. feel like, you know, that's been the case with us for a long time. We need to start mm. coming forward and winning some comps, you know, mm. and improving. I know we've done so good so many times, mm. um, but through those junior days, um, mm. working hard and I'm, I'm, I'm unsure. Yeah. I'm unsure if you're going to keep playing, if you want to pursue playing NRL or... Because mm. mm. um, you get a sense of the competition then as yeah, well. You're yeah, playing yeah. against the bigger kids, the bigger squads. Yeah, and I think um, I think a few things happen in your life and they sort of push you towards, this is what I want to do and mm -hmm. I do want to play NRL yep. and I do want to play the highest grade at whatever yep. level I'm at. And yep. Yeah, that's what ended up happening. Well, if I think of a couple of words to describe you, tenacity, enthusiasm immediately spring to mind, um, and it's they've held you in good stead to see you play 131 New South Wales Cup games, 47 Queensland Cup games. So over those those period that period of all those games, tell us about some of the memories of your eight or so years in New South Wales Cup at the Bears, um, some of the players that really made an impact on you, some of the moments, the, the coaches, the, yeah. the ground, North Sydney Just, Oval. I mean, it means so much to you. I know it does. Um, I don't know where to start. No, it's, no. Well, let's go back to some of the bigger victories that we've scored, some of the, the field goals on the bell. I yeah. mean, you know, some of those great victories. Well, my favourite victory of all time... Um, I know we were going to bring up Sean Manny and people, you know, people will remember as well um, that I hated his guts. <laughs> but I loved him as well because that was fun. That's what brought the best out of me when someone would put shit on me or call me names or something. I just would fight back so hard, even if I made a mistake. That's when I'd fight back. And, um, yeah, Sean Manny, me, me and him uh, had a long-running battle. And, you you know, did, drop a ball you did. And run from 50 metres away just to pat me on the back of the head. Or yes. Or give us a shove or something. Like, mate, are you serious? Like, you know, yeah. give us a break. But um, there was a game against Tigers. 
and it was 18 all and it was back and forth and I watched the game actually probably two months ago because I found the DVD. Yeah. It was a very tight game, uh, yeah. a lot of feeling in it. Tigers beat us in 09, about half an hour into overtime. Yeah. Um, so there's feeling for a few years and this was 2011. And um, this is my favourite personal moment for myself. Um, but your son, Jay Florimo, kicked the ball across to me in the corner. Um, and I batted it back. It wasn't the best kick. Yeah. Had. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But, no. <laughs> um, but it's got his dad's kicking yeah, game. It's all right. <laughs> um, and he kicked it and I batted it back. And then, no, actually, Mundine kicked it. Mundine. Matt Mundine kicked yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. And then Jay picked it up as it went back. Me and Brendan McKinnon, whatever he was doing out in the wing, he was in the dummy. Macca was out there. Dummy. Yeah. Knocked it back. Flo kicked it. Flo hit the post. Bounced off. I was following it through. I think it might have been three or four metres offside. But the ref didn't Play see it. Picked it up. Scored in front of the Ken Irvine scoreboard. Yeah. And we ended up beating them. It was, that yeah. was probably one of my favourite moments. And yep. there was a big blue um, behind the post after it because there was just yep. so much feel. And it was like a big... Tension or relief that yeah, we beat them. Yeah, you got just, them. And the try sealed it. It was golden the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. about two minutes to go. Was yeah, okay, right. Yeah, was going home. yeah. Oh, look, there were so many great memories. I know you talk about the Ken Irvine scoreboard, but the, up the other end in front of the, the stand there, scoring yeah. tries in, at the yeah, fig tree and in, yeah, in the corner. Sure. Yeah. Most of your tries, or a lot of the tries, you're dominant in the air, you know, taking the high ball. Sean Mooney was, you know, yeah, some great sure. battles yeah. that you had um, yeah. over the years with also him. Also, Bryson Goodwin. Uh, I didn't like Bryson. No. And then I didn't mind him. When I think when he came to see us from Bulldogs, he ended up being a better bloke, I think. <laughs> we teach people how to be better blokes. <laughs> but some um, of your teammates, yeah. I mean, you look at, you know, the guy who was delivering those kicks, Dar Darren Nichols, who, oh, yeah. who was, yeah, you know, was, was a awesome. master class. Yeah. He, he you really know, your really combination with him was outstanding. Yeah, he'd get the team around the park really good. And it, it, it's no surprise that he went on to play NRL eventually. It took him a long it time. It did, yeah. He yep. till he was 29, 30, but... Um, yeah, Desi, uh, me, him and Desi, me, sorry, me, Desi and Brad Loopy, um, we had our own little thing, called ourselves a sleuth squad. Right, um, right. It was a pack of bears as a sleuth. Yes. And we are all born in 89, so as okay. we were getting older, we sort of, you know, <laughs> uh, give, give, give the young He was an in interesting individual, Brad, Brad, Loopy, Brad Loopy, yeah. He, he was the best. Uh, yeah, He was yeah. all about fun and training yep. hard and yep. playing hard and yep. um, good energy around the team and, you know, in the gym, we had a lot of fun uh, through those days when we moved from the Anzac Club into the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had a, um, we had a good, we had a good crew, didn't we? we, we the players, you know, we were yeah. really tight, yeah. and a good yeah. coach. I mean, Chops so, had us all yeah. firing. So Chops Wayne was, Lampkin. Chops was coaching from 2007 to 2015, um, which was, you know, at the end of an era. Um, great coach, very old school, um, but also very good technically. Knew how to pick teams apart. Um, knew a lot about the spirit of the game, which he put into all these players. And um, oh, he's such a big mentor for me coming mm. through the grades. You mm. know, he's helped me out so much. Mm. Um, as well as Grant Barker, I'd have to give a mention. Um, yeah. Yeah, Grant. Really well, I know you, you've been really proud of, of the way you prepare, and, and as far as professional athlete, athletes go, you're right up there with, with, with the, those that I've seen in, in, the yeah. way, in the things that you do, the way you prepare, the way you push yourself, and you're very proud of that, that work. And Grant Barker, bomber, yeah. you know, he came with a, a certain style, which yeah. I think you really enjoyed. Yeah, he was, um, he was a world champion kickboxer. Yep. He actually fought against um, Vitaly Klitschko in Ukraine uh, one time. And he, he said a story about, um, he went over to fight a small Ukrainian guy and he got there and the guy was six foot five and ripped the bone, 19 year old, and he uh, kicked the living hell out of him. So yeah, um, but yeah, champion fella, very yep. old yep. school too. Um, and again, he just knew how to work athletes and get the most out of you. Yep. And um, I remember the first day of training we showed up and he made us run. He goes, he got there and he goes, all right, boys, 4,400s. We all went, what? He goes, I don't care, 4,400s, let's go. And 40, 4,400s. Yeah, no. 4,400s. No, that's And we got to 27. That's too much. We got to yeah. 10, and, uh, um, you might remember Johnny Cafoto. Yes. Got the got the 27 and Johnny Cafoto and pretty much fainted and yeah. collapsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're all weak. <laughs> we all went home. And, and you thought, wow, Bill, who yeah, is this guy? Crazy, yeah, yeah. Well, I like him. Yeah, the yeah. first year was really good, but I think by the second year it sort of wore off. <laughs> yeah, know, it's a bit unique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, um, it was really good. Yeah. So, you, you know, we, you, you scored 133 tries in your time in both New South Wales and Queensland, which is just amazing, you know, 
given that your strike rate is almost one try per game. Yeah. Um, but you moved to Redcliffe in 2015 and that proved to bring you a, you know, a grand final appearance. How hard was it to move away from Sydney given that you've committed so much to trying to crack first grade, not quite getting there and then thinking, OK, there might be an opportunity up in Brisbane? Yeah. Um, it was very hard. You know, you probably don't remember, but I, I remember messaging you and um, everything that was going around with that and... I, um, I actually signed first to go to Lee Centurions in England. Okay. And then that fell through uh, for whatever reason. Um, and then on a day's notice, I was still speaking to you. And then I was going to go to Redcliffe when I was actually when I was 20. And I wanted to pursue it through the Bears because I knew we were looking at 2013, getting on the coast. So I hung around for that. And Granddad played at South Sydney as well. So I really wanted to try and pursue it through South, which I ended up you know, having a full-time contract with the Rabbitohs. Mm. But, um, yeah, it was very hard to move because I, ne I never really wanted to. And I was at home still. I was 23 mm. years old, 24 years old. And, I, mm. and on a day's notice, I just packed up and said, I've got to go. Because yep. I had a lot of things going on away from off the field. And yeah. yep. I'd had a good run with the Bears. And I could sort of just feel I was getting a bit stale at the Bears as mm. well. And I, mm. I was hanging around trying to get a premiership. And, and we got with the 14. So I could just feel there was a bit of a change coming. And there was. 2015 was a big overhaul. And... Um, yeah, yeah, I went up there and completely different club. Yep. Just a completely different Really? Club. What were the differences? Um, well, North Sydney's a club that um, I guess we see ourselves as um, underdogs mm. a bit. Mm. And we always just sort of struggle to get there. We struggle to get there, whereas Redcliffe's just got all the cash. They win a lot. Mm. They're, um, mm. they're pretty much the manlier sort of. Yeah, the they're silver on, tails. They're on the peninsula up there right. as well, so yep. it's very similar. And a lot of the Q Cup clubs don't like Redcliffe. Okay. Just based on the fact that, you know, they do have a lot of cash. And yep. Rah, 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 but, yep. Um, so it was great a club, it was, great club. It was, yep. it was very good for me because I'd always trained really hard. I'd been very professional at the Bears where I felt some other guys might not have sort of been trained like that. Whereas everyone at Redcliffe was just on. There was so much yep. quality there. Yep. Any week you could be dropped to play BRL, which is a Ron Massey Cup equivalent, just because mm. the standard in that mm. club is, is mm. so high. Mm. Um, and that, that was good for me, but coming back to North Sydney, it, it took me a while to find my bearings again in 2018 yep. because I've been yep. at a club like that. Yep. Even though I still remember you know, all the old Bears stuff. And yep. that, um, it was a big change. I come down on a day's notice. Yep. Um, yeah. Back from Redcliffe, same yep. as I went up. Yep. I was playing that week. Oh, I remember that first week. The coach said, who, who is this bloke? And half the bloke guys were scratching their head going, <laughs> I'm not quite sure about him. <laughs> but then it t only took yeah, a couple yeah, of couple sessions, of, and yeah, then especially yeah. one game, and they realised yeah, you were 100%. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah there was um, you had your impact straight away. I yeah, remember that. I thought, yeah. and oh, I was rubbing my hands together because it was what we needed a little bit at that yeah, time was just yeah. a bit of that passion, I a bit of that, that energy. Well. I felt that. Felt I couldn't really hold back. I had to try and bring the team up straight away. Yep. Um, and we didn't have a great season that, that year. Um, there was a lot of things going on away from the field with, mm. you know, the South and that. And mm. it changed at the end of that year. Mm. And now we're with the Roosters. But, mm. um, yeah, mm. it was, oh, man, coming back from Redcliffe to North Sydney was just a special feeling. Like, yeah, I it bet. Was really, coming home. Yeah, really strange. Yeah, um, yeah. Going from Dolphin Field back to North Sydney, back, back to Bear Park. Was, yeah. It was really cool. You yeah. know, it's, it's, we want to understand and, and, and treasure what you bring to this club, what you've brought to this club over the years. And that's what we're trying to do today is talk a little bit about that. But I also think there's a bit of a future for you at the club as well now that your playing days are, are winding down um, in, in being a coach, a mentor for the boys at the club. Now, I know you've involved with the under-18s this mm -hmm. year at the SG Ball with yeah. Tony Cunningham. It was yeah. cut short a little bit, but how did you enjoy that, that side of um, oh, yeah. being on this side of the sideline? Yeah, um, frustrating, <laughs> very frustrating. Um, we didn't go great, but it was great to see kids improving. Mm. It was great mm. to see kids come along and and start getting more confidence as we went along. It was, it was great, you know, um, you don't realise actually how much you learn and know yourself until you're coaching kids that are 12, 14 years younger than you and there's things they're just not doing right, you can help correct them. Like what sort of things, strengths did you see that you brought to the team? You know, as we've mentioned, the, those words there are, are, are standards for um, you about enthusiasm and passion. Just but working hard. You yeah. just got to work hard. It doesn't yep. come without work, like working hard. If, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not in with it, don't have um, 
you know, you need 120% commitment, and if you don't, you're just not going to make it. Mm. Yeah, it's simple as that. And I think SG balls are grade, you know, and 20s are sort of the grade where you realise where you're going to go, keep going with it, or go, no, nah, it's not for me. And, um, you know, for the guys that want to go on, they'll understand where I'm coming from if I'm hard on them. And um, the guys that not, they'll go their other way. But, um, but you enjoyed that? You enjoyed really it? Loved yep. it. Yeah, yep. it was really good. And I was doing conditioning and, yep. and able to give a lot of the backs some good detail. Yep. Um, uh, learning, obviously, learning stuff at the halves and the 5 8 and the fullback. I had to learn a bit around that. Yep. Um, that's a bit more technical for me. From the wing, I'm more ready to play from the middle coming. Yep. But, um, yeah, it's all a learning thing. It's my first year as, as a coach and helping yep. out with coaching. And so, you know, I think. I'll only get better as time goes on with it. Yeah, um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, and yep. and hopefully we can improve those young kids and yeah. have, have a win inside with the Bears. That's um, exactly what it's about, that's and having awesome. people like you around them is, is only going to improve them. And I know that um, the boys certainly enjoyed having you there, and the coaches enjoyed having you there. And we we watched on, and we weren't quite sure how you were going to manage it because you're such a vocal person on game day. I had to bite my tongue. Had to bite, bite your tongue, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it's it's important that the messages are, are, are good ones and you've always been able to do that. Yeah. So I'm glad you're enjoying that. Yeah. Mate, really appreciate your time. It's been outstanding talking to you today. Right. We'll, um, we'll certainly be back again to talk uh, in the near future. Sure. I hope you've all enjoyed today's Bears banter. Curtis Johnson, thanks very much, mate. Thanks, Flav. See Go ya. Bears.